everyone, it's Julia. Thank, thank you so much for joining me today. I got happy mail. A viewer um, sent this to me, and this is her serger ends and her serger threads, and it is absolutely beautiful. My serger threads don't look like this. They're, they just seem to be full of, of more other stuff, but there's metallics in here and so many different colors. So thank you so much, Julie. She also sent along this gorgeous pin cushion, which I have been using. I just love it. And I, I would love to learn how to make these and maybe I'll do a tutorial on something similar. She fills them with walnut, um, crushed walnut shells. It's just incredible. So again, thank you so much. But today, I'm gonna show you what I created. I created new fabric with this and I turned it into a bag. Isn't this just cool? What I use for the top of it is a piece of tulle. And this tulle is a champagne color and it has these little speckles in it. So there's a few things that I wanted just to, to go over and show you how I do. One of them is the protective corners for my, for my bags. And another one is how I create the, the detachable wristlet or the detachable little strap on these. So we're going to be creating the fabric first. And I'll be showing, showing you the steps on that, and then going into some of the other details. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, let's keep, get creating. Some of the things that I'm going to be using for this bag, besides the thread, I use a batik fabric for the lining. And in this one, I'm going to be using this whimsical fish fabric. What I really like about using the batik is it has, it's the same on the front and the back. And you'll see a little bit more why I like using that as we go along here. For instance, this bag, I've used just a really pretty floral batik. And it, I also use it for the strap. But I cut some of the motifs out and just laid them on the fabric. So you can see the flower here. And then I also laid in a little piece doily and just a little bit of lace. The lining piece measures six by 10. This finished bag is gonna be a little bit smaller than the other one, more of a pencil case size. So this is six by 10. Now the outer fabric and the, and the fleece that I use is cut a little bit bigger than, I cut an inch bigger on both sides. And the reason why I do that is when I get all my sewing and my stitching on here, it, sh it, sh it shrinks up a little bit. So then I'll cut the size that I need out of this. This bag also was, I used the white fabric, the same fabric as the base fabric. The reason why I like using a white is that the, the thread just shows up so much, it's just brighter and it looks, just shows up so much better. So I have the front and the back here, two pieces of the base fabric. Another thing needed is a three inch circle and that is for the protective little corners. And I just found a circle in my kitchen. This is a cup that I just do around and cut. And this is, this is a felt. It's like a wool felt, so not real heavy, but it doesn't fray at all. And that's the type of fabric you want for your corner. This is a, a faux suede, this little piece of ultra suede that I put on here. You also want a little piece for the little loop that you're gonna be putting on the bag. And so I just cut a little piece of the felt for the loop also. So you'll need that. I also have, again, I cut some of the fish out of the lining fabric. And those are gonna be scattered on this bag. The tool that I'm using on the, on the cover everything up is this really pretty bluish green color. So that's gonna be going on the top of all of this. I'm also gonna be adding some little bits and pieces of the lining fabric right on while, while we're creating this new fabric and also some sequins. I thought that would be fun. This is going to have a maybe a little bit of an undersea look to it with these fish and we'll see what, what happens. Let's get started creating the fabric.
I'm laying the thread out, just filling in the gaps and trying to make it even. All the fish are going in the same direction and just laying that on top. Now I'm adding the sequins, just scattering it throughout and filling in some more with some of the thread. I'm snipping little pieces of the lining fabric, just scattering it here and there. One thing nice about the petite fabric is it's the same on the front and the back, so you don't see the back side of the fabric when you do these little confettis. The last layer is the net. And now I'm just working on the other side. And this one I'm doing pretty much exactly the same way, except I'm laying the fish going in the opposite direction. I do have my two sandwiches made now, the front and the back of my little bag, and all the layers and everything sandwiched in between. And I'm going to be heading over to my sewing machine and I'm going to be machine free motion stitching all of this around. What's so nice about the tool is nothing is going to get caught and everything is going to be held into place. But I will carefully take all the, the layers over to my sewing machine. I'm going to be free motioning this on like I mentioned and I so I will be putting on my free motion foot. I'm going to be using a variegated thread. This is one of my favorites. But this is a Coats and Clark 100% cotton variegated thread and I usually pick it up at Joann Fabrics when it's when they have their 40% off thread sale. This is the color. I believe this is um, gumdrops. And this is one of my favorite colors. Now on my sewing machine, to set it up for free motion, I drop the feed dogs, I turn the stitch length to zero, and I lower the pressure of the pressure foot. So those three knobs that, that I will adjust. Sewing machines vary when you do this. You might want to just either dig out that instruction book and see if they, they have instructions for free motion. But almost every sewing machine, you can free motion there's a way to do it. So you might want to just, you know, take a look at that and see. But mine, I'm going to be, do, be doing the adjustments. I am going to be setting the camera up, speed through this a little bit, but you can, so you'll be able to see my stitching. So that's the next step. I'm just meander stitching, cutting my thread there and just outlining some of these fish and going back and forth. And notice how I'm, I can go over all this. Because of the netting, nothing is getting caught. I'm carefully going around any of those sequins. I have one side completely done and trimmed out. Now the, the, I trimmed this to six by six inches by ten inches so it's the same dimension as the lining. I was mindful a little bit of those sequences to, to scoot them in if I needed to so that I won't hit them with the seam allowance. I am going to be taking a, a, a half inch seam allowance on this little this little zippered pouch. Still have to trim this one out to six by ten and then my next step is I'm going back to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch all the way around this just to make sure everything is tucked in there and so the edges are secure. And then we're on to the reinforced corners. So I'm going to show you how I reinforce the corners with this circle. My edges have been sewn and then I sewed the bottom seam together. So the right sides together and I sewed taking a half inch seam allowance. And then I press that flat. And that is the first step in doing the little um, corner. I want to cut this circle in half. Once the circle is cut, I'm just going to lay it over 
that bottom seam, lining up the straight edges on both sides, pinning that into place. I will be taking this to the sewing machine and then and just edge stitching around the circle part on these. Another thing I like to do at the same time here is attach the little the little loop. This I just fold in half and place about an inch down from the front and I'm just going to attach it to the to the seam allowance. Again, I'm going to be taking a, a half inch seam allowance. So I want that in the seam allowance. So I'm just going to be put, putting that into place. I do have my reinforced corners now in place and it's on to the zipper. To talk a little bit about the zipper, your zipper needs to be at least two to three inches longer than your bag when you're doing these reinforced corners like this. And we're making a sandwich out of our zipper. But first of all, what I like to do is just lay my bag so it's facing up. I know that I want my zipper pull when it's closed to be in the same position or the same end as my little loop. This zipper needs to be face down onto the right side of the little tote or little bag. I like to line up this end right even with this edge of my bag. My next layer is going to be my lining and you want your lining to be right sides to the right side of your bag. It's kind of hard to see with the batik which is right which is facing which way but you want to sandwich that in between making sure that this little zipper is all even on one on this end making sure your little layers are even on this edge as you're sewing to make things just a whole lot easier I just completely open this and just get that little knob thing out of the way so when I'm at the sewing machine I don't have to fiddle with that and I'm gonna stitch this using a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down so it's going to be up approximately in the middle of my zipper. I like a little bit of the zipper cover color showing, so I'm not going to sew right close to the teeth. Instead of pinning, I do like using clips for this part. And and I know there's there there are like sewing clips, but I don't I don't have any. I'm just using these binder clips and I'm just clipping this into place. At the sewing machine, I'm going to Sew it slow and just make sure things are lined up. You just want the edges to be matching and then you're then you're safe and you're good to go. Now my piece looks like this with my zipper in between on the top. My next step is to, to top stitch my lining down. So I'm just going to finger press this and iron from this, this side to get that lining in place and top stitching from the front. And I'll be just edge stitching this all the way down. I've got the top stitching done and you can see that the lining piece hangs down on the back now. Now onto the other side of the zipper. I have my lining facing up. I lay my zipper wrong side of my zipper on the right side of my lining. And you want to again line up the sides line up the lining pieces on all so everything is lined up on both edges and on the top and then you want to flip this up and you want to catch this so this will be the right side of your pouch and form this sandwich on this zipper. I'm going to use my little clamp things. I'm going to again stitch so that I'm about in the middle of the zipper tape and stitch all the way down. At the sewing machine, now once I get these this clamped so I know that everything is lined up, I can open up this zipper and get it out of the way and just get it all the way down here again so it's easy for me to sew this zipper in. I now have a piece that looks like this. Now this lining is tucked back. This lining has already been top stitched so it lays underneath. And now we need to top stitch this side of the zipper. 
This is the reason why your zipper needs to be longer. If your zipper was shorter and, and this end was right up to here, it this step quite difficult. But I'm just again folding this down, ironing, finger pressing, and then I'll be top stitching this side. And now we have something that looks like this. We have a tube that's open all the way through. So we need to close up these side seams. And to do this, you turn it inside out. On this step, it's imperative that the zipper pull, that the zipper is open, but that the pull is not off of the bag. You want to get that in so it's on the inside. If it was out here, you would cut it off and then you would not have a zipper. We're going to be leaving like a three inch gap here so we have a space to turn this. And then we're going to be stitching to the corners and all the way down the sides. I like to mark so I don't forget. And then do some pinning, just making sure everything is lined up. Now when you get to the zipper, notice how the zipper is folded and you want those teeth to be down towards the lining. Okay, and then you just get that zipper lined up, get everything nice and neat. And again, I'm going to be taking a, a half inch seam allowance. I will be going back and forth, locking my seam, going to the corner and taking a half inch seam allowance all the way down, making sure that those teeth of the zippers are facing the lining. I'm going to be doing that on both ends. And on this end, you're going to see the zipper teeth a little bit better. You see how it's folded and those teeth are facing the lining. Getting everything lined up and sticking a pin. Now this is a little bit of a bulk right in through here. Just go really slow and you'll be able to go right through that zipper. And then it's on to turning the bag and you can actually see what it all looks like. My stitching is done, and before turning this, I'm just going to get some of the bulk out of the corners. At this time, too, you can cut the rest of your zipper off. I'm just getting my fingers in there to get this turned. Poking out those corners. These protective corners are nice, especially if you're doing something a little bit more delicate, like this netting. And the zippers poke out really nice. This is a great way to close up a bag because there's no raw edges on the inside. I do have to close up my lining now, and I usually I just do that with a sewing machine, but you could certainly hand do this. I'm just going to tuck, turn this under, top stitch that closed. And then we're going to be on to making the little detachable um, strap for this bag. For the strap, I use a piece of the lining fabric. So we're at three inches by 15 inches. I use a little swivel clip and a rivet. This is like a snap rivet and it's, there's two parts to it. There's some tools that I used to put the rivet in. First of all, I use a crocodile to poke, to poke the hole and I use it on the smaller hole setting. I do like using a steel block. There's a tool for this, uh, th this tool to put the rivet in. And then I use a, a mallet or a rubber mallet. I'm folding the strap in half and ironing it right in the center lengthwise. And then folding each end to meet the center. and then folding that to form my strap. And I'm going to edge stitch this all the way down. I have my strap edge stitched and now I stuck my little swivel hook on one end with about an inch or an inch, inch and a half little giveaway right here. 
Now I fold this one in to meet it, fold this one under, and fold it right on the top. So everything is just enclosed in there and there's no raw edges and this is where my rivet's going to go. I like to mark it right in the center and then take my crop a dial and then insert my rivet and put the little cap on it. There's a little metal tool that comes with the rivets and you hold this over and then you give it one good whack on the top of this with the rubber mallet and that in secures that rivet into place and makes it for just a nice finished off look. I'm not going to hit it on, on this table. I don't want to bump my camera. And my strap is all finished. The little clip will clip right on loop and there you go. There is the finished little bag. I, t I have so many threads on my table. This was a messy project but it's so fun and it's so interesting the results you can get from creating your own fabrics with whatever scraps and thread and I hope you learned something today. I hope you enjoy the corners. This was a this is a, a trick I learned of a few months back and I've been using it a lot on my pencil cases and my little zippered clutches. So I hope you learned something today and thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, have a great day.